Sanyo Sanflet Prototype Sanyo Bean Index and Index 1 Production Ready Bean Index Television. In June 1985, I picked up the latest issue of Popular Science magazine as I had done many times before. In that magazine, we found an interesting article about a new color television which used a flat color CRT, much like the Sony monochrome Watchmans introduced a few years earlier. Of course, at that time it was cutting-edge technology and I was eager to learn more. The article went on to describe the set was being shown for the first time at an international exposition in Japan. Sanyo of Japan demonstrated in Tsukuba, Japan, a 3-inch color prototype beam index tube nicknamed Lollipop because the display broadened out above the tube's gun, much like Sony's flat black and white CRT, first introduced in 1982. Called the Watchman model FD210 and shown on page 2 of this website. When I first saw photos and read about the prototype back in 1985, I could not wait to purchase. Additional specifications. 3 inch color 60 times 45 millimeters. Brightness 200 nit, Sony KVX 370 200 nit, black level 6 nit, resolution 125 TV lines, Sony KVX 370 150 TV lines, contrast ratio 33, 1, Sony KVX 370 more than 50, 1, 3 index stripes for every 4 color triplets. 145 total triplets, Sony KVX 370 148 triplets dimensions 122 times 235 by 50 millimeters, CRT 42 millimeters thick, deflection angle 47 horizontal, 16 vertical, 5 watts 12 volts DC, 100 volts AC. The below 3 inch color Sanyo San flat shown may have been marketed in Japan for a brief period. Were there others? Finding a real Sanyo Index Beam television would be the holy grail for collectors. Added the 19th of January, 2022-1985 Sanyo 30C TV1 we found one and as a collector, I'm ecstatic. The impossible became reality. Video Karma member Jerome H. found the first picture in 2010 and back then, I had doubts it was ever manufactured, but here it is. This television is the first and only flat beam index color CRT made available to the public. Sony made a prototype, but never released it. Introduced in 1985, the Sanyo predates the well-known Sony KVX370. We became aware of this set in 1985 from published articles in Popular Science and other magazines and have been searching diligently the past 12 years after my career retirement. This set uses the lollipop-style CRT, with screen being 3 inches diagonal and 42 millimeters at its thickest point. Deflection is 47 degrees horizontal, 16 degrees vertical. The set has all the usual controls and inputs including auto color and aft. A detachable battery pack holds 8 AA batteries. The set measures 9HX 4.5WX 1.75 inches thick with battery back detached. I have the 12 volt power supply and leather case with the find, but no paperwork. The set is in very good condition, just needed cabinet cleaning. The front viewing screen is glass, not plastic. An adjustable stand is recessed into the rear cabinet and the antenna is straight as it should be. The set feels like 2.5 pounds, I guess. Jerome was correct, the set appears to be for American standards and the label on the back reads assembled in USA with Japanese components, how often or odd is that? Indeed, after cleaning we attached a digital converter box, set the dial to channel 3 and switched on the power hoping for the best and behold, we had a gorgeous lollipop, indexed color picture. The color and brightness looks comparable to the Sony KVX370, but the RGB stripes have a finer pitch, so the images appear in higher resolution. In the simplest terms, a black carbon material is laid down under the 145 triplets for better contrast and every four RGB stripes are sandwiched by non-emissive index stripes that emit something close to ultraviolet light which is collected by a light collector plate. Attached at the rear of the court, a diode attached to the top of the plate send the UV light to a custom IC processor that indexes the single electron beam to the proper RGB phosphor stripe. No shadow mask or aperture grill. 
In this scheme, the electron's spot size is critical so it won't spill over to adjacent phosphor stripes and contaminate the color. In the few screenshots provided below, you can see the index stripes above and below the RGB stripes and gives you an idea of the spacing between them. A single strange lit blue stripe can be seen at the left and end of the run in field. I'm not sure of its function. This video will provide you with random news clips from my local television station, followed by screenshots from the clips and a few screenshots from classic DVD movies. It was difficult to photograph single beam color cathode ray tube images and could not capture the usual quality I expect. We used a Sony A6300 camera set on a tripod, MP4 video format, one stroke 30 second shutter speed and F10 with auto white balance. The video was shot the 20th of April, 2022. For more information, go to Visions 4 magazine https colon slash slash visions 4 net journal dot com slash Winds right now in the Flagstaff area, 24 miles per hour and gusts hitting 30. Now, this is a little bit of a reduction because we saw gusts close to 40 about an hour ago up there. We do expect winds to continue to be an issue for at least the next couple of hours and then gradually back off. There is, though, a chance for those high overnight winds right at the fire site as those winds accelerate down the eastern slopes of the San Francisco peaks. Now, for tomorrow, gusts at 50 to 55 miles per hour up there and across many other parts of northern and eastern Arizona. For the valley, our gust at 40 miles per hour tomorrow and a wind advisory for us from 11 a.m. till 7 p.m. We might see some blowing dust in the air as well. Right now, 91 degrees here in Phoenix so far. That has been our high today, but tomorrow uh, we are going to drop substantially here across the valley. Highs in the upper 70s here in the Phoenix metro area as conditions stay dry and those winds pick up. Tonight, 80s on tap from 7 until 10. 70s in the forecast after that. And about 8 o'clock and hours afterwards, that's when we'll see winds less than 10 miles per hour. But a few light breezes still possible here in the valley for the next couple of hours. Overnight, down to 64 here, 52 in Sedona, 39 degrees in Flagstaff, and temperatures in the 40s for Heber and Sholo, as well as Payson and Prescott. Tomorrow, those spots ending up in the 50s and 60s, and Flagstaff topping out at 48 degrees, with our warmest spots in the 80s across southeastern Arizona. These will be the driest spots across the state as well, and I mentioned earlier, but southeastern Arizona will see those fire weather warnings, also known as red flag warnings, for tomorrow. Let's take a look at the changes, though, because this storm system is not just bringing wind. It's bringing a chance for rain and snow up north. Future pass tomorrow, 8 o'clock in the morning. At that point, just some clouds moving in. But as we head through about the middle of the day, showers are going to develop in northwestern Arizona, up near the Grand Canyon, and push to the southeast. There is a chance of snow in the mix, and that chance getting a little bit better as we head later on in the day. We could see a light dusting above 6,500 feet in elevation for the spots that get it. And again, there is a chance of maybe seeing some rain or some snow flurries out near where the tunnel fire is burning. So fingers crossed on that one, but no matter what, crews are going to be battling the high winds again tomorrow and what little moisture we get out of this storm will be gone by this weekend. So we take a look at the next seven days here in the valley. Windy at 79 tomorrow. We rebound over the weekend. Highs in the 80s Saturday and Sunday. 90s are back on Monday and as high pressure takes over, we get even hotter. 99 so far has been the hottest day this year and we could do it again Tuesday and Wednesday getting awfully close to that dreaded triple digit mark which we have yet to hit in 2022. Looking to book a summer getaway without breaking the bank even with rising prices we found some ways to save.
Gaming thinks I do is fly a stunt kite on the beach. It's the kind with two strings. Oh. And you make it do twirls and dips, oh. and oh. you have to make sure there's no people underneath because yeah. it kind of right. can crash. I, uh, I've seen those. They're very cool. I didn't know what they were called. Yeah, well, stunt kite. And you have six siblings. I do. I'm the middle child. All right. All right. Could you be in the middle of six? I'm not sure. I'll just do I'm the math on that. Six. I'm one of seven. Oh, I of course. Well, there you go. <laughs> she got me. She's right. <laughs> I apologize for that. Nice Thank to have you here, Vivian. Thank Good you. Good luck the rest of the way. Hello, Robert. Hi, Pat. Uh, Robert Ferrer. Right. Could we have the real players up here now? <laughs> <laughs> All right, you ready for this? Let's do another toss-up. This is worth $2,000. The category is proper name. Here we go. And it's Vivian. Mariah Carey. That's it, yeah. She got a bow. She has $3,000, and spinning stuff very shortly. Here's Jim Thornton. Yes, I am. With a perfect getaway, Pat, tonight's featured Margaritaville Vacation. Grab your flip-flops, set your coordinates to fun and relaxation, and escape to Margaritaville Lake Resort, Lake Conroe in Houston. Enjoy your luxurious suite at this perfect lakeside retreat. Make a splash in the Jolly Mon Water Park. Run about on a ski boat. Recharge at the St. Somewhere Spa. Hit the links or savor island-inspired flavors at five restaurants. It's your license to chill in this waterfront paradise. Eleven thousand four hundred seventeen dollars. Well, we had a lot of fun this week uh, because, uh, as we did last year, our players have a chance to win a home here, uh, courtesy of our friends at Minto and Latitude Margaritaville. Each night, in addition to cash and cars, will include one home envelope on our bonus wheel with the opportunity during regular gameplay to that to two envelopes and we'll talk more about that later we hope right now let's get to our first puzzle and the category is uh, well it's going to be a wheel of fortune crossword and the clue is breakfast blank and vivian you got the right to start here okay. letter please r well there are a couple of r's you can pick up that gift tag it's a thousand dollar margaritaville gift card redeemable online and Say everything, don't add anything, go ahead. Sandwich, burrito, nook, club. Nice job. Yeah, you did. So, uh, we got the gift tag and the cash hand. That round was worth $1,850. So, it's uh, been all Vivian so far. She's got both toss-ups and the first round, which is $4,850. We're just getting started, guys. Don't worry about it. Our newsletters are full of interesting stuff. Like games, chances to win, and video messages from Pat and me. So 
Sign up on wheelofortune.com. What do you think about this message, man? Needs more vowels. Tonight's mystery round is brought to you by Eggland's Best Eggs. Doesn't your family deserve the best? Eggland's Best Eggs. Classic, cake free and organic. More delicious, more fresh taste, plus superior nutrition. Better taste, better nutrition, better eggs. Only Eggland's Best. $10,000. Thanks a lot. The phrase is the category for this next one.